So this is me. Um, I was at Amazon for six years. I won't, I'm going to time myself just to make sure that I don't overlap for anyone else. Um, so I was at Amazon for six years. Um, I set up the catalog in Singapore. I ran the 3P grocery business in the EU. Um, in 20, I quit my job in 2022 when my co-founder showed me stable diffusion this is in a pre-chat gpt era and i saw for the first time you put in some text you generate an image and i thought wow this is going to absolutely revolutionize e-commerce and we have been building e-content since then e-content stands for e-commerce content in a in a combined uh, way um so i guess i'll start my presentation with just giving a bit of background about what is gen ai um ai has been around for since the 1950s um we use it in amazon we use it in google maps we you know we all we're all very uh, aware of what it is but what we're dealing with now is a slightly different type uh well a fundamentally different type of of artificial intelligence which basically enables you to generate new content it's as you probably all know not super accurate but it's able to handle a lot of more creative tasks and the way it works is is not by magic but it's by prediction so an AI, um, artificial intelligence only understands numbers. So every single, if you're taking chat GPT, every single uh, uh, kind of word in the English language becomes a number with hella, you know, with A being one and the xylophone being 17,000 or whatever it is. And basically what it does is it, you train a model and it's predicting, okay, with this sequence of number, what is the next, most like, most likely next token. So this uh, is the same with kind of stable diffusion and image generations. It's looking at these pixels, which actually are just numbers and trying to guess what is the next most likely token. So for every token you can, as you can imagine, is starting the likeliness of a next token appearing. So for, you know, the word hello, probably it's a 9% likelihood I've made this up that how is the next one and squirrels is super unlikely. And therefore, with the more data you give the AI, the more tokens, the better its guess is becoming the next one. So, you know, you give it hello, how, and it's going to know basically that it's going to be more likely to be R, like hello, how are you, than squirrels, which is a totally random word. So that's basically what's happening. You have these huge uh, AI models, which are basically just doing super complicated maths. You give them some, some tokens, and it's predicting them most likely next best token based of its training and, and the prompt you give it. So why do we think these things are intelligent? So this is a quote that um, I'll read out because it's super long, but basically I'll summarize. When, we when, when you're training these neural networks and you're training this, these models to understand how to best predict the next word or the, uh, the next pixel, or whatever it is, what are you actually training it to do is compress kind of human world and life and intelligence uh and therefore by kind of in this process of crunching all of these tokens and words together you, this ai actually gets a pretty usable representation of the world um so that's kind of where the intelligence comes from and a good question you may be thinking or may may not be but should be maybe thinking is like okay if you're predicting the most next uh, the most likely next word, when I give the same prompt, how come I'm always getting different things? And this is basically uh, the temperature settings. So you can control on these AI models how to give the, you know, the top, uh, the most likely next token the top 5% or 0.5% or 0.005%, depending on the temperature setting. And broadly a bigger a greater a hotter temperature is going to allow it to hallucinate more and just kind of go a bit more crazy within a certain parameters of how likely things are and uh you know going super precise um with like a with a higher temperature with a lower temperature setting means that you don't allow this to happen and the final thing to to understand is that you actually can increase the quality of these um ai tools by fine tuning. So this is when you, you know, when you have chat GPT or a base model and you're taking um, specific data, like in e-content uh, use case, we took, you know, highly converting um, images for, 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 you know, lifestyle images. And we also took, you know, high, highly converting 
Amazon listings and you fine tune on top of the base model to make it more likely to produce words or pixels in that kind of format compared to, you know, the original base format, which is, you know, just producing something, anything in the internet. So that's hopefully a bit, well, hopefully that gives you a bit of a background. It's not super simple, but hopefully it gives you a five minute tour of what these AI models actually are as, as we're dealing with them today. So the next kind of question, the biggest question that I get asked a lot is around prompting. I mean, it's something we've done a lot of um, research into any content. So hopefully from that, you can kind of picture that AI models don't have any innate intelligence. They don't understand text that you give them. They're basically just understanding the tokens or the, you know, the, the order of, of the text or whatever that you give it, and it's breaking that down. And then it's giving you something based on its trading data and it's fine tuning. Um, yes, so I think that's everything here. So how, so at, at eContent, we we basically took um, 10,000 uh, plus uh, kind of customer generated images and we started to rank them to understand what prompts get the best output for customers. So for example, here's an image generated by a customer. The prompt was a very high quality and modern crowded restaurant, a very pretty happy waitress, blah, 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 blah. And we um, we rated this in accuracy, accuracy uh, six out of 10 because you've got some elements, you know, basically you've got 60% of the elements in the prompt coming out and the quality is four out of 10. And basically we define like how we think about quality uh, and basically anything lower than a five is not usable. And and we didn't think this image was, was whilst okay, not, not usable in a, like a professional context. Here's another prompt, a portrait of a beautiful woman wearing pendant and silver necklace, studio lighting, high quality HDR. And this, uh, you know, had a 10 out of 10 accuracy and nine out of 10 quality, because basically every single element of that, um, you know, these are two customer products and every single element of the first of the second prompt is in the picture and it's, and it's a good usable quality. So that's how we kind of labeled, uh, here's two more examples. I'll just get through this. Um, this is a classic thing that we see people trying to talk to the AI as if it's kind of, uh, um, you know, a human, uh, the, the customer wrote, forget all the images generated, generated, blah, 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 blah. This basically generated nothing of any use. I couldn't even tell you what that is. And on the other side, uh, you know, a really short, um, specific prompt of this dog food and you generated a dog, dog next to it, uh, which was again, high rated. So as I said, we ranked, uh, we did this with 10,000 images. Uh, I had a team of 15 uh, uh, students, computer science students, and we found the following uh, in terms of how to prompt. You should start, uh, you, you should you should basically have the following structure. You should start with a subject um, in or on a, the scenario location, uh, and then you should add your descriptions. So the subject would be your product. Uh, so I don't know if you're selling a coffee mug, coffee mug, uh, you should use a very generic a kind of type of uh, product like this, like chair, if you're selling chairs. And then you would go into your uh, scenarios or locations. Basically, how do you want your product to interact with its, uh, you know, with the image? So is it being worn? Is it on a table? Is it, uh, I don't know, on, on grass? However it's interacting, that's kind of the, the next part of the prompt. And at the end, you want to have these descriptors. So, um, for example, here, kind of like office setting, uh, blur, like all of this kind of stuff. Um, and and I'll, I can share some some resources afterwards for some good kind of descriptors. So that's um, tip number one in terms of structure. Tip number two in terms of ex of of using AI is, ex is to experiment. So we saw this. Uh, this is the relationship between how many monthly prompts customers did in our tool and what the quality was. And there was as you would hope, a relationship between how much they they did it and experimented and and what what we rank their quality to be. Um, the third the third tip is not to be polite to AI. So we saw that if you didn't in include words like please or please do this or these kind of phrases into your prompting, you got a twelve you got a thirteen percent increase in accuracy and a ten percent increase in quality. Um, and this could be uh, to do with, to some extent, like the word count decrease, uh, which, you know, basically half, but we didn't really see a relationship between um, word length, like prompt length and quality.
more that what were the type of things that people were were, were uh, talking about. Um, my next tip is for pe is for um, people. Um, so these are both images of people generated on e content, uh, and this is true of all. But like as I said, e content is just find uh, fine tuned a base model, basically same base model as any any you know competitor, mid journey, or whoever whoever you want to talk about. Um, and for people, close-ups work a lot better. So, um, you know, trying to get rid of uh, hands and limbs and this kind of thing, which which distorts it. Um, I know I'm nearly at time. So last one is check your spelling and grammar. So I'm gonna, yeah, those are the summaries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run quickly through this now because I know I'm at time. Um, and yeah, the last thing, I know we called it, um, uh, we, we called it, the, the title of my talk infographics we've we've just enabled the ability to actually not just generate lifestyle images but infographics in e content which is combining basically uh flawed and and st stable diffusion to create some beautiful visuals um so that's it uh i hope that was interesting and useful uh we've got a 10 percent off discount to e content here by scanning this code and um and yeah i'll hand it over to whoever is is next